Okay, if you're uh, watching this video, you should now be on Small Basic 1. I'm going to do a bit of a run through here on the um, on the exercise. It's actually fairly well laid out on the OneNote, but this might give you a bit of support. I'm using Small Basic Online. If you've already gone into the Small Basic introduction and downloaded it onto your desktop, you'll get a slightly better experience. But I'm going to use this because it's the most basic one and the most consistent for us. So I'm on the Small Basic website. You can just Google this or it's small basic hyphen public website dot azure websites dot net. I can't imagine anyone's going to type that in. Then we're going to click on start coding online, which then takes you to here, which I've already opened. Now when it first comes up, you'll see it says this. So it says a new program. Now a new program is in green because it's commented out. Then it says text window right line. It asks the question, what is your name? text equals text window read so you can take the information from this and text window right line hello plus name so we've got a variable that's created here a variable if uh, you can't remember is something where we're teaching the computer something that can be changed um, something that it, um, we're defining as we go so in this case we're calling it name and we're saying that whatever is inputted here becomes this variable called name and then it will say hello plus name. So just to show that, if I click on run, it says, what is your name? I'm going to write Mr. Dyson, press enter, and it says, hello, Mr. Dyson, and then the program has ended. Now, if I just click back, it takes me back to my main program. Now, in the exercise that you get here first, it starts by saying text window right line. So I'm going to start to write text window, and you should see it comes up with... Um, the writing as we go right line so as soon as I get far enough through this if I press tab it should complete without having to type everything in if I replace data with what I want to write and I'm going to write it using speech marks not two apostrophes which won't work I'm going to write hello world okay now if I press run you should see hello world and then program has ended and the program has ended you can ignore that's just saying that the program's complete and we go back so it's the first exercise done from there what we then go on and do is we try to add some color in okay so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of lines before this so we can either take them out or we can replace them you don't need to just keep adding you need to read through the instructions as we go with this so this one again I'm going to do text window tab to complete it dot background color tab equals and then we do the speech marks and we define a color now again on the uh, one note you'll see the 16 colors that you can use dark green is one of them again I'm going to do the same here so text window dot foreground and as soon as it's got enough of it I can press tab equals brackets and I'm going to use blue there's nothing to stop you changing any of these colors um, if you look on the one note you'll see there's 16 colors that come up as black dark blue dark green dark cyan dark red dark magenta dark yellow gray dark gray blue green cyan red magenta yellow and white and when I'm finished I press red and you should see now my background color is green and my writing is blue. And scroll up and press back. Now, we can add a few little bits to this. One of the things we can do is we can add um, like a, a box around our writing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of these bits because I just want to demonstrate the box. I'm not that interested in the color at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the start bit here and I'm going to write in graphic. the capital graphics window dot draw text and then it asks for an x and a y coordinate on what the writing is going to be so i'm going to start this one uh, with the x coordinate of 15 x being across the y coordinate of being 15 which is the up and down one and here in the text i'm going to put in hello world now you can see because I've written that there, I don't really need this here anymore, so we're going to ditch this one. And then when I press run, you should see it says hello world. Now, on some examples, if you do this on the um, uh, offline version, 
you should see it comes up with um, a box around it. With the online version in this case, it's not showing that, um, so it depends which version you're on, but it is still showing the actual, um, the, the actual work. One of the things that's happening here is that we've got these X and Y coordinates. Now, one of the big things here when you work in programming is that generally you're starting from zero. So if I put 15 across, it's going 15 pixels across from the left. And if I put 15 down, it's going 15 pixels down from the left. So what I'm saying is that 15 across and 15 down should be somewhere like this where it writes hello world. If you go back and change that, to 50 across and 15 down. It should be no further down, but it should be further across the page. So let's just press run on that. Okay, it's not much of a change. Let's try that with a much bigger number. Let's try something like 100. Okay, can you see it's going across the page? What happens if I put in a really big number like 500? And press run. Okay, you can see it's moving significantly across the page. And again, if we change the, the second one to something like 255, you should see it now goes further down the page as well. Okay, so it's worth playing around with these and making sure you understand them. This X and Y um, coordinates, particularly the fact they start in the top left, is common to almost all the programming that we're going to do at school. I can't think of an example, but there probably is one where it's not true. Now, next thing we can do is we can have a look at the colors and shapes a little bit more so i'm going to take this out again and start fresh because at the moment we're just really playing around with this so i'm going to go to graphics again i'm going to remember to use a capital I'd love to pretend that was a deliberate error but it wasn't so we're going to do graphics window i'm going to do background color you can see it's giving you suggestions as soon as it's down to one i can press tab but this time we'll do something slightly different what i'm going to do here is I'm going to do speech marks and then I'm going to use the hashtag and then I'm going to do A F E E E E and then I'm going to do another one so I'm going to do here graphics window again and this time I'm going to do brush color and this time I'm going to use Again, speech marks and again a hashtag. If I could operate my computer, that would be very useful, wouldn't it? And this time I'm going to do eight B and then four zeros. And then I'm going to do graphics window again. And this time I'm going to do pen color. This time I'm going to use speech marks and I'm going to use hashtag again and this time I'm going to go FF 8 C 00 okay now for those of you who've recognized this what you should spot here is that what we're doing here is using hexadecimal code um, so this is defining the colors using the hexadecimal code and if you just go on and google uh, hexadecimal Colors. Probably correct that to American for me. And you look at one of the websites. This one's normally quite a good one. If this one doesn't work for you, there's hundreds of others. You can look for color on it. RGB, which is in blue mix. Color mix. You can actually change these. Talk more about hexadecimal itself. Great. The important thing for here is it just a much wider range of colors, and what it's doing is it's giving you a short form of encoding lots and lots of different uh, possibilities. Anyway, so we've put our colors in here. What I want it to do now is I want to set the font size. So I'm going to say, clearly can't get into head that I need to use capital. Graphics window dot font size and I'm going to say that equals 30 so it's going to be 30 and then I'm going to use a apostrophe here now in the, this case the apostrophe starts a comment so if I write this is just an example 
number you can change it you don't actually have to write this green bit out when you're doing it the computer is completely going to ignore this but comments are really important when you're coding particularly when you're writing longer bits of code I've probably talked to you about this before but if not by the time you get on to doing very large programs and you're having to stop to have tea or you're having to stop to work on it or you're having to come back to it months and months later it's really useful if you've given yourself some comments that explain what the work's for or what's happening or what stage you got to so when you're doing this as an example you don't necessarily need to copy out the green uh, comments that i've used but it is worth reading them they have been put in there for a purpose now we're going to define so we're going to go to graphics window again and this time what we're going to draw but not that one so we'll clear that so we're going to draw a rectangle and again it's asking for some um, dimensions so where on the x are we going to start so on this one i'm going to start 18 across and i'm going to start 25 down we're going to have a width of 190 now this is in pixels so these aren't very big and then we're going to have a height of 30. i'm going to press enter then i'm going to do a second one so i'm going to say graphics window and I'm going to say draw text and this one again we're going to put in two numbers here so like on the other one where is this going to start so this one I want to start 20 across and I want it to start 20 down and I'm going to write and it's been different to this I'm going to write something like hello year seven okay when you see this in OneNote, you'll see I've given a lot more comments below. And the reason for that is I'm explaining things there that I can't explain by talking on the actual written piece. If we run this now, what we should get, hopefully, is Hello Year 7 in a box. If I want to change that, I can go back. I can change the dimensions of the box. So obviously, if I make that one into something like 250, then what you should find is it gets much wider. Okay, if I drop it back to something like 190, that will change. Equally, if I go back to my HTML picker here and choose a different color, so let's choose green here, and we borrow this hexadecimal code here, I can change one of the colors here. So let's choose this pen one. Control V to paste that in. And if we run that, you should see that that's a different color. Although, to be fair, that doesn't look very different from the one I'd chosen before. Okay. So you can have an experiment with that, have a play around, see what you can do with it. Okay. Once you've done this, then the next thing that you need to start to have a go at doing is you need to have a go at um, the challenge. And in the challenge on this one, it says, challenge graphics window color. Remember the challenge is the work I'm looking for you to submit. Number one, try changing the code above so that the text is green. The background is dark green and the rectangle lines are blue. You'll need to look at the picture um, in the OneNote page for this, although it's similar to the one we've just done. Try changing the code font and rectangle size and try changing the shape to use an eclipse instead of a rectangle. Now some of these you should be able to work out. I'm not going to explain everything for you, but there's some big clues here. So if we just have a quick look here and go to graphics window and press dot, Okay, you'll see it comes up with a large list of suggestions here. So if I type draw and start to write eclipse, I think you'll find it gives you a bit of a clue here on how you're going to do that. Equally, if we do graphics window font, you should see that font name is an option on there. And then you can see what the options are for the font names. Font size equaled something. What happens when you choose the font name? Which fonts are there? Where can you look them up and give it a try? This is the piece of work I'm looking for you to hand in, and you don't need to include all the bits you've done up. It's a learning curve. You should be developing it as you go through. Okay? Hope this helps.